Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Jamil Sayyid, the Mu'edvin, and I'm very, very excited to have partnered up with Dean TV to be able to produce this online exclusive series that showcases some of the highlights of my, of my trips and excursions. So to give you a quick background, last year, in 2015, I made world history. I became the only person in the history of America to have navigated all 50 states within a record span of 35 days and recite not only the Adhan, the call to prayer, but also the last sermon of the Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him. This is Jamil Sayyid the Mu'addin and we're here in Banana Republic. In a pinch, R2D2 got left in Atlanta, right? So because of that, we're here in Banana Republic and these lovely ladies are helping us in this time, in this 11th hour, right before I go on stage, a whole new wardrobe change. Noor Taguri, hopefully you approve of this message. So I was just gonna say that, look, so you know, this is really quickly, this is what happened. And when it happened initially, it was panic, we thought it was bad. Right? But the reality of the matter is, is that something amazing came out of this. We had an opportunity to get a whole new wardrobe on Delta and at the same time do dawah to these people over here and let them know that there's an event called Muslim for Memphis and there's a guy who ran around in 50 states made Adhan as well and they were happy to take pictures and be a part of all of that. That's a case study. That case study is more valuable than the bag at this point. So I was just going to say, look, God works in mysterious ways, right? Yeah, what yeah. you thought was a catastrophe turned out to be an upgrade in my wardrobe. <laughs> a compliment <laughs> of <I> Delta. <laughs> Fly Delta. Right? Exactly. <laughs> I'm not getting paid for that endorsement. Well, I guess I am. <laughs> You're getting compensated. That's right. That's right. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Jamil Sayyid, the Mu'eddin. Behind the scenes, this is... OG Rob Nasty. That's what's up. <laughs> Ali Allahi. <laughs> <laughs> Safi Khan. Safi Khan, that's right. We control, we run things here. We really do. Behind the scenes, Muslim Memphis 2016. Hashtag it. You'll be ready for this. All right. Assalamu <laughs> alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Jamil Sayyid, the Mu'eddin, sitting amongst the... Uh, the scholars, the light, the ustad, our teachers, a blessed gathering. What you can't see over here amongst all of the bright faces are the malaika that have gathered. You know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us. Lillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ardi wa in tubdu ma fi anfusikum aw tukhfuhu yuhasibkum bihillah. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِّمَّنْ دَعَا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ إِنَّ الْأَبْرَارَ لَفِي نَعِيمٍ وَإِنَّ الْفُجَّارَ لَفِي جَحِيمٍ Jamil Sayyid here, I'm in Oweitha at the IHOP and we just got done with this amazing session with some of the best reciters across America and you know we were reciting and I think they were saying something so whatever you'd like to I appreciate it. Yeah. The music was beautiful. Right. It's a blessing. They're referring to the recitation of the Quran. Kalamullah. <laughs> On spot here at the ISGL Masjid, I'm here with Brother Edward, and we just did something incredible today. That would be equivalent of shaking up the world, right? And so, what was that thing? Brother Edward took Shahada today, which is a really good Friday, no pun intended, cheap jokes. Um, and we wanted to just get a little bit of background as to what led him to come into Islam, 
my reason initially to, uh, for my hesitation was to, because uh, I didn't feel I didn't want to take my shahada and then still have to keep learning. Um, I wanted to, you know, learn everything I need to learn and then take my shahada. But the way he explained to me is that, you know, nobody's ever going to be perfect. And, you know, as long as you're pure in your intentions, in your heart, you know, you can, you know, learn um, throughout your life. And it's not something that you really need to, you know, know everything at once because nobody's ever going to know everything. So I, you know, kind of stopped making excuses and I just went and did it. I don't really have that big of a family. I don't have a family at all. I was raised in foster care, and so without really having you know positive influences to sort of guide me towards the straight path, um, and without having sort of a home or a cornerstone where I can you know come back every day and return every day and you know be amongst my peers and you know know that I'm living for more than just right now, today, and um, myself is that you know I have people, a community behind me that's like you know I need to make them proud, I need to honor them, and I need to, you know, live my life the way that, um, you know, life needs to be lived, and uh, this is the way that, you know, I, I'm going to do that. Here I'm on campus at Lawrence University of Kansas, and we're at the athletic store, and uh, we're about to go and do some something incredible. We're going to go and raise the call to prayer uh, in center court and here at the Jayhawk facility. And I've got some friends over here, and I was wondering as I was perusing through the merchandise, you know, what does Rock Chalk Jayhawk stand for? So, All right. it's basically the actual chant from Rock Chalk used to be from the actual science club back in the day, and that's what they would chant all the time and it just kind of progressed from there and like he said the rock chalk came from the limestone as limestone is chalk and the limestone is what KU is built on so that's pretty much it Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar we, me being a Michigan Wolverine, we go, uh -huh. go blue, simple, go blue, simple as that. <laughs> but you know, um, but yeah. So this is this is Cody Case, is a great friend, and I think we can even say mentor. He's done tremendous work here for the university in the area of diversity. We're gonna have a separate interview from him, uh, talking about his experiences and really what some of the lessons are, you know, from his work, his tenure here at the University of Kansas. But um, but yeah, we came here to do something. So absolutely. So so after that brilliant explanation, thank you guys for um, all the history behind and the etymology behind Rock Chalk Jayhawk. We are presenting our great friend and visitor, Jamil Saeed, with uh, an actual t-shirt that says Rock Chalk Jayhawk. And uh, I'm very, I'm looking forward to going to center court with you right now. Are you ready? I, I am absolutely ready. So uh, we all, I think we should all say Rock Chalk Jayhawk. All right, let's do it. Ready? One, two, three. Rock, Rock Chalk, Chalk Jayhawk. Jayhawk. All right. That we're here on center court with uh, Abby. This is the Jayhawk court. This is where all the basketball happens. This is Basketball City right here. But we wanted to get a perspective. So Abby's the one who made this thing happen. She's the one who escorts people in for tours and they have an opportunity to see this facility. K Rocks basketball is awesome here. It's no place on earth like Allen Fieldhouse. Just a quick question, just I thought about it. You just heard me make the call to prayer, right? So what did you think about that? I've been around the world. I've actually been to Turkey, Israel, different places. So I'm pretty familiar with it. And oh, it's cool. It's a different. It's different from how I grew up, but I respect it. It's cool that you go around and do it in different places. Yeah. See, that's that's what it's about. You know, traveling opens up the mind. It opens up the heart. Right. It allows you to be able to see different perspectives, appreciate and respect different perspectives. got done finished making the historic 50 Moss Man presentation in Birmingham, Alabama, and we wanted to get a perspective on what it's like to be a Muslim woman, a young Muslim woman living on the Bible Belt. Have you, you know, experienced any type of anti-Muslim sentiments or Islamophobia or any negative things towards being a Muslim? Um, on, on a daily basis, no, but um, 
multiple times I have received um, some hate messages and uh, things like, you know, you're a raghead, you're never going to get anywhere in life, or it was other things. I, you know, I do a government class and I've had people tell me, you know, Trump-like stuff, like, you know, because you're, you're an oppressed woman, you're never going to, oh. again, get in anywhere in life. And so, um, but with every hate crime, people, I think with one hate crime, we'll get like two other people saying some really nice things, and then we'll get curiosity about Islam. So I get to tell them about what Islam is about. And in that, those people find peace and love. Um, and so they learn more about Islam. And so hopefully, I hope one day that process continues to the point where that specific person Islams. And so, inshallah khair, I think that so, wow. this is so a good were, process. So you were able to take something negative and turn it into a positive, right? Yeah, I was actually um, on a panel yesterday with Leadership Birmingham, um, and there were multiple different ethnicities and backgrounds. I was the only Muslim there. Um, and after I finished, uh, one man came up to me, and he was like, out of all five people, your perspective was the most optimistic, um, and it was um, the best, um, and, he, and he really praised Islam. I think I was the first Muslim he met, which was really wonderful. And before I even did the panel, I wasn't prepared. I knew nothing about it. I totally winged it. But um, alhamdulillah, I asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make me um, a good model for Islam because mm -hmm. I'm not at the perfection yet. And so alhamdulillah, it, was, it was really wonderful. Okay, excellent. So tell us about the general community in Birmingham. What are they like? Well, Birmingham Islamic Society is amazing. It's like a family community, and we haven't experienced any threats or anything. Okay, but like, I mean, as far as like living amongst, you know, the non-Muslims in the area, how you, how do you find them? Oh, well, the people that surround me are very, like, friendly and nice, and they're actually very, like, respectful of my religion. Uh, right behind me, we have an LCD screen that talks about or shows how many times or how many days have gone by without the cell phone going off. And this is Imam Bashir uh, from one of my most favorite countries in the world, Turkey, right? And uh, alhamdulillah, we've been his guest, and I, I delivered the last two khutbahs. I'm the Imam of this Masjid Islamic Society of Greater Lowell. I've been here for two and a half years. I was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. Salams to all my Brooklynites. And um, yeah, it's pretty much who I am and what I do. And this is our masjid. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and al masajid lillah, this is one of the houses of Allah. And anywhere you go in the world, as you know better than most, um, these are all the houses of Allah. It's no different from any other community or any other masjid anywhere in the world. Um, the ISGL's history, just like you know, the history of Islam, if you go back as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, you know, when you are du'afa, when you are weak and you are few in number, you know, the, the ISGL community, it started as a small community, it started in, in somebody's basement, in some small house, a rented out facility, and as the families grew, the community grew, and they grew out, grew their facilities in those rented spaces, they saw the need for a, a, a building, they, need, they saw the need for a school, for an imam, that's how ISGL came to where it is today. It's been close to 10 years or more since we've been in this building, and we have currently outgrown this building as well. We have um, over 500 families in this community. Um, we pray Eid Salah, close to 1,500 people, maybe they, we pray together for Eid Salah. And this is just the ISGL. There are neighboring masajid that have uh, you know, other mosques in the area. They have their own Eid prayers, or they have their own you know, masjid that pray, people pray five times a day. In our Jummah alone, as you're witness today, we have two Jummahs. We don't have enough space for one jama'ah, we have to pray two jama'ahs, one at one o'clock, one at two o'clock, and that's the only way we can accommodate for them. So inshallah, with your dua and all the people that are watching, inshallah, we pray for the, the success and the tawfiq of the entire ummah, and in between all of those duas, dua for ISGL in particular, that we find a bigger, more accommodating space, inshallah, for our community that continues to grow. I'm here at the Islamic school where Brother Ziyad and Brother Ashfaq and... Go ahead, say your name. Alim Khan. Alim Khan. And I just wanted to give you a small window into what we're about to get into. You see, mashallah, the excellent food that they have prepared over here. And then... Here is the fish and the chicken. You got fish, you got chicken. Brother and Ziad cooked this himself. And we've got yeah. rice. And we're gonna... Oh, I, say I salam, hummus, Sammy. How's it going? All right, very good. I made the hummus. He made the hummus over here. So we're about to get into this food real quick right before we... Pray Salat al and then engage the entire school and, um, and share that on social media.
I'm at the IS school here in Birmingham, Alabama, and you see the kids having a good time out there playing some soccer. This is what happens. You know, Muslims, they learn about Islam, they take care of academics, and we have sports. Very healthy. Shout out to Mari Gray. This is the IS school, and we're in the Quran lab. So uh, I wanted to first of all introduce you to the chef. Yeah. My name is Tariq Ziad. Tariq Ziad, he's from Jordan. Yes, I just want to let yes. show a shout out to Jordan. <laughs> and Brother Tariq, you know, tell us a little bit about you know, yourself, what your role is here in the Quran lab. Yeah, Alhamdulillah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with this Quran lab. It is very, very unique. And this is, subhanAllah, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with this idea that uh, help us, help the students to memorize the Quran al Kareem with the technology. MashaAllah, that's excellent. Using, using the technology, if you can see, uh, we, we are using the touch screen, uh, we are using the headphones, we are using everything possible to make students love the Quran more. So tell us a little bit about technology and how the kids respond to that. Alhamdulillah, yeah. as you see, as you can see that we have a smartphone. The, all the students, they, they love the, this technology because, because they can see, they can hear, they can touch also the ayat. If they want to uh, know the translation, we can see them, we can recite it, we can everything. So for example here, Bismillah. Wow, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, so we can use it, we can, uh, Alhamdulillah, they can use it. Hand, hand by hand, I hope you enjoyed the show. As a witness to the landscape of Muslim America, I think it's evidently important to concentrate on the tradition and the saying of the Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him. Inna Allah jamilun yuhibbul jamal. Indeed, Allah is beautiful and he loves that which is beautiful. And that's what we have tried to showcase to you today through this small little project that we'll be producing quarterly. So um, tune in to Dean TV next time in about four months we'll produce another video. I will be launching my own show uh, in Ramadan called The Adventures of Jamil Sayyid the Mu'eddin. Look out for that. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. My handle is the Mu'eddin, official hashtag 50 Mosque Man. Until next time, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This Dean TV video was made possible in part by Islamic Relief, working together for a better world, and by Guidance Residential, the number one Islamic home financer in the U.S.